Hello, I'm Sandra from Coaster Country. Now Mark caught us some beautiful garfish and showed you how to fillet them three ways. So I thought it was only fair that tonight I show you how to cook them three ways as well. So I thought that we would try some crispy corn flour seasoned with salt and pepper sizzled in the frying pan. A more healthy steamed garfish parcel using some fresh uh, turmeric, garlic, spring onion and lemon and then of course the traditional crumb uh, and you can't really have fish without a beautiful aioli so I thought I would show you how quick and easy it is to make a fresh aioli at home as well. So let's get started. First up we're going to be doing our crispy garfish with corn flour seasoned with salt and pepper. It is as simple as it sounds. This here is some ordinary corn flour that you buy from the supermarket and we're just going to season it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, that is just some beautiful sea salt. I'm going to use some ground pepper in this one because I like having a little bit of a kick. Give it a little bit of a mix around. And then choose whichever garfish fillet you like. These ones, because they're going to be small and crispy, I'm going to use the single fillets uh, that he cooked up for us or he filleted up for us. And you want to get it nice and coated with a little bit of all the seasoning on there. So your fillets are going to look just like that. I'm going to show you how they cook up in a minute as well. These ones are lovely and just not quite so heavy as your traditional batter. So quick and easy to do your fish this way. Now where is another little single fillet? Here we go. And one more so that we've got a, a complete garfish. Because don't forget, when Mark filleted, some he kept as butterfly fillets and some he kept as little side fillets as well. So here we go. We've got two garfish, just there. All right, that's our crispy. Next, we're going to do our seasoned, what are we gonna do? Next, we're going to do our steamed garfish parcels. Let me wash my hands and I'll be back ready for the next one. I think steamed fish parcels would have to be my favourite way to eat fish at the moment. I love the way that I can change up the flavour of the meal so easily just by varying the toppings or perhaps the bed that I create for my fish. Now, my daughter and I love having some baby spinach underneath our fish, particularly when we have some gorgeous whiting. But today I'm going to let the garfish tell the story. I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to choose some beautiful butterfly fillets of the gar. Look how beautiful and shiny they are. We're going to lay that down. I'm going to kind of squeeze it together a little bit. I'll zoom the camera in in a moment. Let me find another beautiful butterfly just like this one here. So when I said squeeze together, I'm just meaning I'm gonna keep my fillet nice and close together so that I've got all the meat kind of concentrated into the center of my parcel. Now, our favorite toppings to add are some, uh, some ginger or some turmeric. This is some ginger or galang galau. And we go, tend to go quite heavy handed on it. So that's just some fresh galang galau. Uh, that I've grated using the a zester and you can add as much or as little as you like. We like a reasonable amount. Uh, then we're going to use a little bit of garlic, perhaps not all of this, this is going to come into our mayo in a minute. Uh, and just spread that garlic around. You can use fresh, this is actually a jar of crushed garlic that I'm using tonight. And again, Add as much or as little as you personally like. I tend to not to go too heavy handed with the garlic because I don't want it to overpower my dish completely. A little bit of salt and pepper is a gimme. I'm going to use cracked pepper again on this, just a small amount. And then I'm going to pop some lemon slices. I think two will be enough for each of these. 
a little bit of spring onion over the top. You could also add some parsley, coriander, mint is lovely with it. A little bit of spinach, maybe a little bit of um, broccolini underneath there, some asparagus. All of those things would go beautifully in this. So here you go, these are what the fillets are looking like. And then all we're doing is we're creating a little parcel to trap the steam and the juices when we bake them in the oven. Now sometimes I get clever and I actually uh, can fold these well and kind of tuck the corners in. We'll see if tonight's one of those nights, it's not looking like it is. So sometimes I have to resort to using toothpicks. I've got the fancy ones with me tonight. But when I use toothpicks, all I'm doing is I'm just piercing the baking paper to hold it together. There you go. Two little fish parcels. You can see how quick and easy they are to, to make up. You can make as many as you need. Now, these are gonna go in the oven for about 15 minutes at 180 degrees. So let's pop them away now and they can cook while we're getting the rest of the fish ready and the aioli. Be back in a minute. The third and final way that we're going to be preparing our garfish tonight is perhaps the most traditional way and that is simply using some crumbs. Now for those of you that have never crumbed before, it's a, a little three step process that once you get the hang of it is super easy. What you need is you need some plain flour, some egg, which I've got here with a little bit of milk that we're going to whisk together. And this kind of creates the glue for our breadcrumbs, which are in the next bowl. Let me just whisk this up quickly. Check out the colour of these eggs. These are our own free range eggs from our beautiful girls. They like to feature in our videos. All right, that egg is nicely combined and I'm gonna leave the fork in there because it will save my fingers getting completely dirty in a second. Now, breadcrumbs, uh, this is where I add my seasoning. You can choose, you can add it to your flour if you prefer, but I like to add it to my breadcrumbs. These breadcrumbs are some that I've made myself. Uh, it is simply some leftover bread that was starting to go a little bit stale. I popped it in the oven so that it's nicely toasted all the way through, and then that way it helps to preserve it. If there's no moisture, it won't go mouldy. Uh, and then once it's completely dry, I simply pop it in the Thermomix or a blender, uh, and I blitz it until you get the consistency that you're after. So I like to keep mine a little bit rustic so that there are some larger pieces of the breadcrumb as well as the finer crumb but you can blitz it to however you like. You can also use shop-bought breadcrumbs, panko crumbs, whichever you like. Corn flour, uh, so not corn flour, um, corn flakes even make beautiful crumbs for fish and schnitzels as well. So this is a schnitzel crumb, as well as a fish crumb, as well as any other crumb that you'd like to do. The process is exactly the same. Now as for seasoning, I love adding uh, some mixed Italian herbs, and it's a reasonable amount of uh, breadcrumbs there, so we're going to add a reasonable amount of seasoning. Uh, a nice serving of ground pepper and some salt. There we go. Mix that together. And that's gonna add beautiful flavor to our crumb. I also like adding sometimes a little bit of Parmesan cheese grated through there. Sometimes I add lemon pepper, or if I've got my dehydrated lemons like I do at the moment, uh, I'll blitz up some dehydrated lemons and add that to it for a real tangy, zesty flavor. I can add fresh herbs, whatever you like. Okay, so the process is simple and we're just going to kind of rinse and repeat until we've finished with all of our fillets now. Uh, let's find a butterfly. Do I have any more butterflies? Oh, last butterfly. Here we go. We're going to simply cover it in the flour. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to cover it in flour, transfer it to the egg mixture, which will now act as the glue for our crumbs.
There we go. And into the crumbs. Your fingers will get a little bit mucky doing this, but nothing too bad. If the, if the sensation of the crumb under your hands is not for your liking at all, you could do this in plastic bags and simply, you know, kind of transfer through and do all of the touching through the plastic if you wanted to. But I think being tactile with your food is part of the fun. So there you go, a beautiful home style crumbed gar. Let's do a couple more, hey? How gorgeous does that look? You wait until they get popped into the olive oil and they fry up. So beautiful and crispy with both the corn flour and this crumb. They're absolutely delicious. So there you have it. We've crumbed our garfish. We've got garfish, our crispy cornflour gar, our steamed garfish parcels are already in the oven. I've got a little bit of a mess to clean up and then we're going to get cooking here as well as making that fresh aioli. So I've decided we're going to make our fresh aioli before we cook our fish so that all of our toppings are ready to go as soon as the fish is out of the pan while it's hot and crispy we can dunk it in our aioli and enjoy it right then and there. So I don't know if you've ever tried to make your own aioli at home. It's super simple. Um, it does involve raw eggs though. So if you are feeding to pregnant ladies or to young children, you may want to reconsider doing a homemade aioli that is fresh. You can make a cooked aioli. Uh, if you have a thermomix, it's super easy. I can't give you a recipe for the stove. So I just thought I would show you something that most people would be able to do at home. All that you need is a stab blender uh, and a container that will fit the stab blender all the way down to the bottom. So normally a mayonnaise or an aioli is made by slowly drizzling in the oil. Uh, if there's one thing that you'll learn about me is that I don't do a lot of things slowly. So this recipe works well for me because the stab blender will actually emulsify the oil and the egg yolk um, in the container if we're careful with how we actually lift and lower the stab blender. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one whole egg, egg white included, into our container. We are going to add about a tablespoon of lemon juice, which depending on your lemon could be half, could be a whole. I think it's going to be a whole lemon for me today. Oh, I've gotten a couple of little uh, pips in there that I will try and get out just so that I don't blitz them up with my mayo. An aioli mayo, there's probably some technical difference but uh, I kind of use the two terms interchangeably. There we go, how was that? One, two, three, four, five pips in one squeeze. So we've got egg yolk white, we've got a tablespoon of lemon juice. We're going to add some garlic, some crushed garlic, a reasonable amount, let's say one to two cloves. We're gonna add a decent teaspoon of Dijon mustard. We're gonna add some salt and pepper, a, a kind of a half to one teaspoon of salt. You do want it to be a little bit salty. 
And then in this instance, I'm using finely ground white pepper because we don't want to see the dark chunks of the cracked pepper like I was using in the seasonings before. And about a quarter to half a teaspoon of that pepper. So we're going to add all of that down the bottom. Then we're going to add our oil. So the trick is, and you'll normally always see me using extra virgin olive oil, except for when it comes to mayonnaise. The trick is that you want to find yourself a very neutral tasting oil. If you use an extra virgin regular or um, like a strong tasting essential, um, extra virgin olive oil, you will get a very olivey tasting aioli. I like to use rice bran oil or a vegetable oil that just has very little flavour. Um, with my aiolis and mayonnaises. So to this, I'm adding one cup of oil. Now I can simply pour it on in, which if you've ever made a mayonnaise or an aioli the traditional way, you would cry watching me do that because you would normally drizzle it in. But this is our secret weapon, a $12 stab blender from Kmart, carefully placed down to the bottom of the container and we're going to keep it there until it starts to emulsify and you'll see the aioli forming before I start to actually move the stab blender. So I'm about halfway there and you can see that I really haven't lifted the stab blender very far from the bottom and that's because I'm using the, the force of the blade to actually suck small amounts of oil into my emulsifying egg yolk. It's almost done. I've gotten to the point where I've got such a thick aioli that I can't actually suck the oil through, so we're going to blitz the top bit now. And that is looking brilliant. So, as I knock things over, I'm going to pop this into another container so you can see just how gorgeous this thick aioli is. Now of course you can season this with whatever you like. Um, I've just used some very standard uh, toppings or flavours here. Ah yes, beautiful. Have a look at this. How easy is it to make your own aioli at home, hey? You could put some pesto through this and create a pesto naze. Put some wasabi in there. You could now stir through some fresh herbs. You could do whatever you wanted to, to complement the dish that you're creating. Delicious. Looks good and tastes good too, which is the most important thing. Check that out. All right, let's go cook that fish, hey? Come with me. So let's start cooking this fish. I've got my oil nice and hot. It's just before it's about to start smoking. 
I've dropped a little piece of the breadcrumb in and I can see that it's sizzling nicely. The first fish that I'm going to cook is actually the crispy gar. Ah, listen to that sound. These fish fillets won't take very long to cook at all. We're only talking a minute or two. You'll know that they're ready to turn over when you can start to see the fish turning from translucent to white and the ends will start to curl. This is the perfect type of bubble and sizzle that you're looking for. So let's give the first one a little try. I can see that the edges are certainly turning. So we'll leave the others just a, a moment or two longer because you can see it's still just a little bit pale on that side. These fish fillets are almost white all the way through. So essentially the fish itself is cooked. Now what we're getting is the crispiness. I've got just a little rack here with some, uh, some kitchen towel that we're going to use to soak up any of the excess oil. Oh yes, these are looking delicious. Come on little one. Can you see the bubbles on there, the crispy bubbles? These are perfect. All right, let's pop them out and get them draining. You could pop these in the oven to keep warm if you wanted to. Now, we're gonna use the same oil, which is a beautiful Australian extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to cook the crumbed garfish now. These will take just a, a tiny little bit longer to cook, purely because of the breadcrumbs. But only momentarily. These are going to taste delicious with that homemade aioli and perhaps a service salad on the side or perhaps some homemade wedges or french fries. So you can see that they've crisped up beautifully.
and these are ready to serve. So here we have it, garfish three ways. Cornflour, crispy gar, crumbed gar, and a beautiful steamed garfish package. How delicious is this mix? Plus, of course, our fresh aioli. You can't beat fresh fish. Now, if you haven't seen Mark catch and fillet this fish, then head on over to our YouTube channel where you'll see all of our videos. For now, I'm gonna sit back and enjoy our feast. Guys, dinner's ready!